Character Creation Part 2, The Painting. I wished I was uh, better at doing everything step by step, but I'm not. Uh, when it comes to painting, I generally just dive right in there and start painting. There are some right ways and some wrong ways to do things, obviously. Um, but as far as step by step, I kind of jump around a lot. And what I mean by that is if you're watching this part, you'll see that I have painted the hair one color and the skin one color. And I think the right thing to do would go ahead and paint the entire uh, paper, each individual area one color, like I want the skin tone blue and the shirt red and the spray, spray paint cans different colors, and to go ahead and put a first coat on everything. But you'll soon see here in a minute that I did not do that. Um, I meant to paint the spray paint cans and then the background and the shirt and all that kind of stuff, but I immediately got kind of distracted by the skin tone and started working it more. The first step would be to paint each shape in each area a base coat color and then the second step would be to paint in your lights and darks. Well, instead of painting everything in the first time, step one, I immediately went to painting in the lights and the darks. So uh, you do whatever seems best to you. The only thing that I can recommend is to make sure that you learn how to load your brush with paint you don't want to have too much paint on your brush or you'll get out of line, you'll make a mess, and you don't want too little paint on your brush or you can't really make a nice smooth mark. So it takes a little practice to learn how to get just the right amount of paint. Uh, you saw that I put a dark blue down for the skin tone color and now I'm going over everything and making a lighter tone. Uh, the dark remains visible around the edges of some parts of it and that creates the shadow like for example um, I painted some light blue here but left some space between the uh, nose and the cheek for a shadow and between the lip and the chin for a shadow and so on I'm adding a little bit more light here and blending it in uh, to the face I want to brighten her up some not too bright but a little bit uh, also notice that it's blue and not skin tone. I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm colorblind and so uh, I didn't even want to mess with skin tone colors. That's not my strong suit. Uh, I can do values, I can do shades and lights and darks and tints and tones and all that sort of thing. So while things are not the accurate color, I can at least make them look three dimensional. Uh, then I went in and I painted this uh, spray paint can. Uh, I mixed up a strange color for it and then I added the light side of it and the dark side of it and so on to kind of model it and make it look three dimensional. You're going to see through the course of this video that I reworked these cans several times. This is sort of the first color and in a little while I decide that I don't really like this color and that I want to do a little bit more with it and so I go back in and paint over everything. Um, keep painting until you get it right. The first coat is not usually the right coat but I don't want to sit here and stare at the paper until drops of blood form on my forehead. It shouldn't be that agonizing. I think of a color that I think would go good there and I start painting. And if it doesn't look right later, I'll paint over it. So don't be afraid to just dive in there and paint. You got to get a base coat on it, and then you'll probably have to come back and put a second coat. Uh, notice how I, I added, uh, I did the tops of the cans gray, and then I added a little bit of white, just kind of in little streaks to make it look kind of shiny. I'm not going for realism. I'm just going for um, believability, right? Uh, same thing with the shirt. I uh, originally painted it red. I decided to mix together a little bit of um, light red and make the uh, highlights on it at the top where the light's in it. And then I mixed up some red and black to make the shadows. And I put a little shadow underneath the arm and down the crease and around the edges of it to make it look kind of curved and so on. 
and along the bottom edge. So different values are really gonna make it look good. I decided since she was a graffiti artist that doing drips in the background would be kind of a nice fun background. So I'm just doing a bunch of drips, all kind of uniform with a little bulbous end. Uh, this proved to be the hardest part to paint in later on. Um, the girl there on the left is giving me color advice. So we're talking about what colors to do the background. We decided on an orange and a light blue. All right, so step one, paint each and every space a different base coat. Step two, do the light values. Step three, do the dark values. Uh, step four, fix everything that you can. There's bound to be places where you got out of line, go back and fix that. There's bound to be places that aren't the right color, go back and fix that. And then all should be good. Um, that's pretty much all I got. I hope you enjoyed it. So um, please give me a thumbs up if you did. Please um, share with me in the comments down below uh, something you would do differently or your method for painting it in. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And man, I really appreciate all of y'all uh, tuning in and watching and supporting my channel. I hope that you will come back and view more, give me, uh, enjoy more, and I really hope that in some way I am helpful. Check the description out down below for uh, things that <clears throat> uh, you might could get to, to help the proce process of the project. Uh, sometimes I have links to some of the materials that I use or lesson plans. So anyway, that's it. <clears throat> Check out these uh, wonderful final shots. And until next time, go make some art.